This is Cybert signing into Red Alert 3 on the map Infinity Isle for a best of three featuring our purple Soviets on the left side of the map. This is DDF. And on the right side of the map, the blue allies. This is Andre. Now this is from the loser bracket finals of For The Win, 71. We got $65 going to first place, and then the rest of the $160 prize pool is spread across some other guys. And we, there it was, also a $15 random draw. This engineer is getting dangerously close to dying. You, of course, want to get the kill on the engineer, but you don't want to trade out so many dogs that it's not worth it. The dog actually gets shot by the engineer at the last possible second there. But another dog gonna be showing up, getting roared by that bear. Oh my gosh, this is so many dogs and bears. DDF loses the engineer, but it looks like he may be able to clean up the rest of these dogs so he's out the 500 credits but he's got himself a little bit of cash back on a bunch of those dogs for five more dogs showing up to try and deal with these bears once again and it's just like time and time again this same old story plays out a dozen different ways oh my gosh he's gonna not get the engineer this time because the combat engineer gets the shot off just in time like what happened the other time except there wasn't a second dog that was absolute chaos as DDF loses an engineer, and uh, it looks like Andre able to claim his own oil derrick. DDF will eventually be able to claim his oil derrick. If this engineer gets killed by a Vindicator, that will be hilarious to watch. Awful for DDF. He does capture the oil derrick, so good for him. It looks like he also did lose a conscript, so not a big deal there. Now, real quick, we do want to just highlight these guys... We do want to highlight the routes these players took to get to this place. We, of course, just saw DDF ending up losing to Dimon in the winner's bracket final. So whoever wins this best of three series will face off against Dimon, and that is no easy feat. Andre beat Czar and Zugspit to get here. Uh, those were both best of ones, so not a whole lot to say there. And Czar is actually the one who beat both Queen Oni and Vindy's. Now, I don't know who Czar is, but either he is very, very good, or Queen Oni and Vindy's may not have been up to their regular stuff. Those guys are probably both at least a little bit rusty. And uh, looks like these, uh, well, Vindicators are going to get the kill on one. Flak Trooper almost had conscript there as four bears did get crushed by that MCV. So Andre trying to make things difficult and interesting for DDF. Now it is going to be three refineries versus just the two Oil Derrick, Oil Derrick. But of course, very annoying Oil Derrick capture for DDF. Bear uh, Dogs were rather now going to be camping out in front of this barracks. And a multi-gunner turret actually going to be going down directly on top of this refinery. So these walls are going to have to go down to try and stop this from happening. But it's going to be very, very annoying to try and reestablish these walls. Very nice bombing run coming up here for Andre. And this close, close distance on Infinity Isle is why so this can be such a frustrating map to play. My gosh, the range of that MCV is absolutely insane. I forget every time how far the allied MCV reaches, and this is a total disaster for DDF. Keep in mind, he has four, no, five bullfrogs in the south, so an opportunity could present himself, could present itself to maybe kill all of these Vindicators and then somehow combat engineer his way to victory. I don't know, but this is just an awful, awful position for DDF to be in, losing both of those refineries. He's got the one out on the water. It'll probably get targeted down in a matter of moments. One Stingray doing a little bit of damage to this con yard, but that's not going to be enough. When you've got multi-gunner turrets, when you've got javelin troopers, when you've got vindicators, they can deal with two Stingrays and a couple of bullfrogs, or at least I assume they can deal with two Stingrays as the current moment. They're not actually dealing with the Stingrays in any capacity. Now, the Bullfrogs are going to get some kills here. One Vindicator does go down. A second gets eliminated, and a third is dangerously close to going down. But the Stingrays do get eliminated. Two more Stingrays do pop out, trying to use the reactors to block this multi-gunner turret from actually being able to hit these Stingrays, and actually hits just barely behind the building as well there. So body blocking going on with these Stingrays, but the multi-gunner turret on the far side is enough to clean up everything. And yeah. 
yeah, that has to be it. DDF trying desperately to make something happen there, but he's down 0-1 in a best of five, which means Andre has an opportunity to 2-0 this into the Grand Finals and give us an AVS Grand Finals, a classic matchup, Andre versus Demon DDF. He's got to bring it back with 2-0 himself. Let's see if he can start it in game number two. Which is on Cabana Republic. Now, Infinity Isle, Andre played into that map with his base push, with his cheese. But on the left side, as now Empire, purple, this is DDF, down 0-1 in this series. On the right side, as allies, this is Andre. Now, like I said, Cabana Republic, very different from Infinity Isle, and again, if we see a base push, it can work on Cabana Republic, in particular, making use of the Ridge slash Division here to try and base push, but it is not the same situation, it is not the same kind of linear path that we see on Infinity Isle, especially if your opponent takes to one of these northern locations, either there at the traditional third, or here at a fourth and a fifth. It makes it much harder for that base push to be as effective. It looks like Andre going to be eliminating these Civ structures. Doesn't want to uh, give them the opportunity to be used by his Empire opponent. And DDF, hmm, Riptide's going to be coming out. So this is all before this second refinery. So this is very fast, aggressive plays potentially coming out here from Andrew. He's going to pick up an Engineer, a Peacekeeper, and a couple, nope, not the Peacekeeper, but it is going to be Javelin Troopers. So that's, keep in mind, it's going to be four Javelin Troopers and an Engineer. So the Engineer could just be for this Oil Derrick, and the Javelin Troopers could be for the Harassment. This should all be spotted. No, it looks like he won't quite see it. So he didn't see the extremely late timing of that refinery, but he will spot the Riptide there, and he will have a general idea of what's going on. Ooh, wall's going up. Andre, what do you have planned for us? Andre. Imperial Warriors coming out up here. MCV already moved to the north, but it's Mecha Bay in this southern location. Of course, uh, well, the Mecha Bay would have to be fast to get out Tangus like that, but Mecha Bay in the southern location, which means the north is more of an expansion that can be dropped and then run out onto the water if he so chooses. Andre looking to close things up and push himself into the grand final with Demon MCV out on the water, going potentially all the way across the map. It's one Apollo for now. Vindicator going to be hopping out as well. And it looks like this dojo will go down. Oh, actually it cancels the laser lock. Uh, kind of curious there. But for now, oh, he's going to back up a little bit there. And actually the engineer will get the cap of that oil there. So that's very frustrating for Andre, he may actually have the extra engineer already in this Riptide. So uh, two Riptides full of units, and yeah, so engineer in that other uh, in that other Riptide. So changes hands twice there, and not a big deal either way. These Apollos could end up getting caught by this big group of Tangus. This is six Tangus enough to kill. Never mind. Gosh, that is the least amount of health you can possibly have while still flying home. This Vindicator will get caught out in the open, annihilated oh so quickly. These Riptides unable to find an easy path to their opponent, unable to get the kill on the other Oil Derrick, unable to create any space for Andre to do something. Big move here, catching this Ore Collector, going to get an easy kill. No defense there from Andre, so that was a gift to DDF. Things are starting to come up in DDF's favor. Now these Riptides could absolutely turn the tide of this fight. I'm really surprised the third refinery has not been taken. Imperial Warrior is going to be heading up to that high ground, potentially clear that dog. Of course, can just go for the crush as well. And these Apollos, so low on HP, going to go back for some repairs. But for now, no big moves by either player. No, like, big game-winning kind of swings for them. Or refinery finally up. Well, not quite operational just yet, but it's Tier 2 on the Mecha Bay. As the first Chopper VX stomps his way around the map. And a uh, third refinery, third refinery, so relatively even economically. Oil Derrick for each player. I guess a little more of an investment potentially there for DDF just to secure those Oil Derricks. He produced a lot of dojos over the course of this game. Single multi-gunner turret and a power plant also going to be dropped there, but... Actually, have we seen... No, no command hub, so 
This is still just going to be a tier one, so no cryocopters just yet. Does want to spend the cash on that. And uh, Apollo's finally going down. Crashes onto the high ground there. And it looks like this, uh, nope, no damage to that ore collector. So it doesn't look like a Vindicator was popped along, packed along with that attack. All right, this is a lot of Javelin Troopers, but this is enough Tangus to swing this into the favor of DDF. And actually, that one, that one Tangu crashing down there, doing a little bit of damage to that Riptide. The other Riptide gets completely surrounded. So this, this engagement has been handled very well by DDF. Apollos are now here, which are going to make the Chopper VXs not able to, you know, get the easy kill on the Riptide. And this is the MCV position that I was referring to earlier. This is kind of the... The fun MCV position, where you get to really abuse that build radius. You get to make use of this ridge here, this uh, sort of plateau there and those cliffs. And uh, it's going to be a long drive home, but you can, of course, always drop an airfield over here to make the return to base a little bit quicker. Also get some repairs on that Riptide as well. Tsunami tank mixed into the battle here, or mixed into the army here. And, uh, well, Multigunner Trota is actually going to be enough to push this army back for now. Another Tsunami tank can be stepping out forward. For now, it's still just the three refineries. And uh, actually, DDF going to be grabbing that oil derrick as well, so that's nice for him. Vindicator going to be coming in, and it is going to be a cryo shot firing off, and it will catch the Harvester, so a nice little kill there for Andri. Okay, yes, there is actually the kill. And Tangus with Chopper VX is going to be splitting off south. Now, if they catch the Apollos, they have an opportunity to really put the... Well, never mind. Put the Hurt on a potential expansion of Andri if he's able to get some uh, get the right angle. Tsunami Tank's going to be rushing forward if they can get the kill on these... Well, no, they don't get the kill on the on the Javelin Troopers, but they do... Uh, the extra multi-gunner turrets do push Andri into low power mode. So, making good use of that multi-gunner turret placement attacking the Harvester from the far side. And uh, these Chopper VX is going to be splitting off to take down the power plant. A great move to try and cut the head off of this attack and sending him into low power mode would make these multi-gunner turrets completely useless as the Javelin Troopers get dealt with by the crush of the Tsunami Tanks and the swords of the Imperial Warriors. This attack has been completely shut down on the other side of the map. A free power plant, two power plants. The Apollo's not in good enough numbers and DDF is making this attack look pathetic as he's going to be now pressuring the MCV as long as he doesn't lose to the crushes. No, the power's back online in a couple of seconds, I think. So the multi-gunner turrets are going to be here. It's two of them against this many tsunami tanks, but with no javelin trooper support, this attack will not be stopped. And Never Cheese has been defeated. Andri dropping that second map to DDF. It's 1-1, sending us into the ace match for this quick best of three two maps in like 12 minutes between the two of them ddf in much more control that game and part of that is due to the map very delayed push by andre and if things had gone a little differently he would have absolutely slaughtered that base and slaughtered those forces but javelin troopers they're fragile things and sometimes it goes in the empire favor that will do it for game number two. Let's find out who heads into the grand finals in game number three. Which takes us to Fire Island for game number three. Going guaranteed to be the last map of this series. In the top right hand corner as our purple empire. This is DDF. In the bottom left hand corner as the blue allies. This is Andre. All right. So we have to give a big, big shout out to Rage of Heat. The dude is an unstoppable machine. He's, uh, he's raising kids up there in Canada. He's working a full-time job. He's hosting events for Red Alert 3. He's even organizing second tier events like uh, the Magma Fun that we saw after the previous Dual Duel tournament and the Magma Fun after this tournament. So kind of a morning after, get together, play some 3v3s kind of a thing. And uh, guy's been organizing tournaments for Red Alert 3 for literally years. Uh, do we have some Riptides? No, it's actually going to be second refinery. So Riptides will come a little bit later, but... Uh, or I assume Riptides. He's pulling all of his infantry back, so... He's going to be giving up both of these oil derricks to Empire Control, at least potentially. I mean, one of them definitely. The other one probably going to be going to DDF. Anyways, Rage of Heat, a huge, huge dude in terms of 
what he has done for Red Alert 3, given so much of his own money, utilizing his own cash to uh, run tournaments, to fund this tournament, to fund dozens and dozens of other tournaments over five, six, seven years. I don't even know how long. And just a huge shout out to him. Great guy. Uh, like I said, doesn't play a lot, but I don't play a lot either. So he, he organizes, gives a ton of money, all of that stuff. So big up to him. Two oiled Eric's for DDF. He gets the cash back on both of them. So engineer inside of this Riptide most likely going to be going for this other oiled Eric. And Andre is going to be getting a second tier cap. Actually, he's got a lot of Imperial Warriors to worry about here. And that Riptide can deal with the Imperial Warriors, but he's going to be taking a lot of damage in the meantime. He's going to be going trying to go for the kill on at least some of them. One Dojo does get eliminated there, so DDF is going to be losing that. Two Tangu is actually going to be showing up to support these Imperial Warriors, so it's not just two Riptides versus a bunch of Inf. It's a bunch of Inf plus a couple of Tangus mixed in there. Of course, Naval Yard gets sold off. Airfield back on the ground before the pack-up of that MCV. So that is how things transpired for our allied player. Tangu's out on the field, and it's no pack-up of the MCV, no third refinery on the way just yet, no Tier 2 just yet from our Empire player. Lots of Tangu's are the response. Of course, it's a classic, classic Empire response. If you can win a game by largely building one unit, uh, then you should probably do that. In this particular case, DDF getting lots of use out of his Tangu's actually going to be trying to know okay I thought he was going to be trying to block that refinery location some players like to go for the water refinery first as opposed to the land refinery especially when you got this many Tangu's and Imperial Warriors sitting right outside of a potential expansion location but no refinery on the way just yet for Andre instead the multi-gunner turret is going to be the choice he dropped that one power plant so so far away but you know one of the advantages of the allied MCV Tangu's taking a little bit of damage from that multi-gunner turret, going to be getting pushed away, and the Apollo is also here to potentially play up in the north. Two Apollos going to begin engaging this group of Tangu's. One goes down before it can RTB, so no speed boost allowing him to escape in that case, and man, this is just getting to a dangerous point of Tangu's. Like, look, two refineries doesn't afford you a ton of money, but if you start to snowball with Tangu's, it is very difficult to get back on top of it, especially if you don't have superior economy as the allied player. And Andre simply hasn't had superior economy over the course of this game. Now, this is an opportunity to even things up. One Tangu does go down. The other Tangus are getting some lovely harassment done. Looks like one Harvester going to be going down. The other one forced to turn into a command head. So that's two full rebuilds of Harvesters. Tangu's over there just going to be, going to be giving their lives to the cause, and it looks like it's buying enough time for Tsunami Tanks to get out for that Oil Derrick to go down. So this is uh, this is not going to be very nice for Andre. He's forced to sell off that multi-gunner turret. Now the only thing that he's getting out of this is losing, or is taking all of those tank Tangus with him. Now Tsunami Tanks on the front line, they're going to get the kill on the third Harvester, so there is basically no income. Yeah, there is the Oil Derrick still ticking away for Andre. Finally, he gets one Harvester back online, but this is not a good situation to be in and it's like two refineries is worse than three in most cases but my gosh with the amount of use that Andre has actually gotten out of his refineries is so little who losing that third refinery being forced to sell it off like that that is not over but man that feels terrible all right, Vindicator's going to be able to clean up these Tsunami tanks, and he's got his two refineries back online. He's still got that oil derrick. He just needs a minute to stabilize. And, hey, the, the Tangu numbers did basically get reset, so it's not a scary seven Tangu cloud hanging out over the middle of the map. And these Apollos, if they get a good angle on these Chopper VXs, then there's no transform. There could definitely be a win here, but... The win does not happen. The clear-cut victory does not happen. Point defense drones giving a little bit of extra life to these chopper VXs. The multi-gunner turret gets rebuilt in the main base. There's the first Tangu on the transform for the harass. He's going to be going for the power plant, of course. That is the power move here. Go for the, the power plant is, uh, is the clear move here. 
shuts down the production, shuts down that multi-gunner turret. One Harvester definitely not going down as the transform of the Tengu does allow it to escape on out of there. And it looks like even a Tsunami tank going to be potentially getting in on the action. The multi-gunner turret is down. The Harvester is still alive as it has just a little bit of HP left, and this other Harvester will most likely be going down. I assume something is actually going to die at some point, and it looks like the first thing to die is indeed that Chopper VX. The Apollos do escape, just barely skirting around those Tangus. The Harvester finally did go down. The Multi-Gunner turret is back up and running. One Peacekeeper does get crushed, but a second one does go down. It's not good enough, although he does get the Apollo. One Apollo down. The Tsunami Tank is now off of cooldown, so it gets the kill on the other Apollo and these Riptides aren't great at killing stuff. Killing the entire airfield makes this attack not unstoppable, but close to unstoppable for DDF. He's got four Tangus, three of them with point defense drones still out there, and the Tsunami Tank does draw that Riptide all the way out onto the water, and that Cryo Shot is going to be easily avoided, which means this power plant is definitely going down, and this Riptide is nice, but it's not enough to stop this much Empire armor, although it is actually enough to push this much Empire armor because I really thought that multi-gunner turret was going to go offline, but it didn't. And the second multi-gunner turret, actually enough power here for a second multi-gunner turret. Keep in mind this harvester, albeit slowly, has been harvesting this entire time. So that actually is a bit of an oversight there by DDF. He does get the kill on, it looks like, another Tsunami tank. So he's down to just the one Tsunami tank, although he does have the point defense drones. So that's nice for him. The Riptide finally goes down as well as the Harvester. And now this is a fully heroic Tsunami tank. The DPS of that guy is pretty good by his lonesome. He's going to start eating away at that Aura Refinery. If he forces a second sell off of an Aura Refinery, yikes. Now keep in mind this is also a very vulnerable power plant to these attacks from DDF. DDF getting himself a third refinery up and running. He's been focusing all of his money on his army units, and Andrew just needs, it feels like, a minute to stabilize, but now he's just down to the one refinery, no oil, Derek. So from this point, um, I don't, you gotta, you gotta pull, like, a, like, a miracle out. You got, DDF has to do something horribly, horribly wrong. Three refinery empire versus one refinery low power allies with just an airfield? I, what do you even do? I mean, in this situation, he's got a multi-gunner turret. It's going to be enough to push these guys back, but four refinery empire. And I mean, this power plant is very exposed. It could be sniped pretty easily. And actually, DDF is possibly doing exactly that. There's the transform, so have fun spending your money on power plants and not units. And this power plant is also very exposed, so if DDF catches wind of that, have fun spending your money on power plants instead of refineries or units or anything. Hello, he could cryo shot this ore collector and get a kill of one ore collector. I don't know, DDF could just go for tier 3 at this point if he, uh, if he really wanted to. Oh, never mind. Not going to actually mount a final assault, so uh, no big attempt at a comeback from Andre. It's just kind of a fizzle out as game number three goes to DDF, and he will be rematching against Demon in the grand finals, best of seven. That match is coming up in just a couple of days from your perspective if you're watching this on the day when it comes out. Thank you all very much for watching. A big shout out to Rage of Heat for putting all of this on. And a big shout out to DDF for stepping back in to that grand finals for his rematch versus Demon. Thank you all for watching. And this is Cyber signing out.